Does God condone slavery? Well, when most people think of slavery, they think of 1700 style chattel slavery, where one person owns another person. Well, when you read the Bible, the Bible uses the same word for slave as it does for servant. When it says uh, we're to be servants of God, it also says we're supposed to be slaves to God. The word can be used interchangeably in both the Greek and the Hebrew, I believe. Uh, when Jesus uh, washed the feet of his disciples, that was the job of the lowest slave or the lowest servant in the household. And Jesus did that job. Uh, when we're supposed to act like Jesus, we're supposed to lower ourselves and act like that to other Christians and other people. We're supposed to lower ourselves mm -hmm. to the lowest uh, places in society, not seek to be like, oh, I'm the greatest. Like, no, you're supposed to lower yourself and help others and do the lowly jobs that other people don't want to do. Uh, take out the trash, clean up after uh, dinner, uh, see trash float blowing around in the park, pick it up. That kind of stuff. All right. Now under like what the Bible says about slavery in the Old Testament where it mentions slavery the most. All right. Uh, basically like I'll give you two examples of how that kind of slavery worked in the Old Testament. One is like a poor person that you didn't have money so you're trying to buy something but you're too poor to buy a house or uh, an ox to plow your field. My example for that in modern terms is I needed a car and didn't have the money for it. So my uncle gave me his Tahoe and I worked for my uncle on the weekends to pay off the Tahoe. So biblically, I am his slave uh, till the Tahoe is paid off. And it, also, you have a job every week, you go to work, you're a servant of your boss. Now, in the case of, the, in both those cases, we negotiate terms back and forth and decide on what a fair value for both of us is. And that's how the Bible slavery is. Uh, and what this does is prevent poverty. Because every seven years, all the slaves were freed. So if you don't have the money uh, to plant your fields this year, you can work for your uh, neighbor. He gives you the money to plant your fields. And now you can plant your fields and your family's out of poverty. And even if you takes you would normally take you 10 years, the Bible forgives that after seven years. But it plants people get to plant their fields and not or other things and not go into generational poverty. Now, what if somebody says, I'll work with you, I'll live in your household if you feed me, which was done in biblical times and they would stay for seven years or well until the seven year it's not actually always seven years it's until the next seven year jubilee period well what they would do well not jubilee it's the uh, rest uh, sabbath year until the next seven year sabbath year and then you'd be freed well if a slave doesn't want to be freed and wants to stay on after that period in time, he would be marked. That way everybody knows that he doesn't want to be a free person. Now, I know this is a little confusing and doesn't make much sense with today's standards and stuff like that. But in biblical times, it was normal culture for people to be slaves. In fact, in some societies, there was more slaves than there were free people. And the fact that the Bible still acknowledges a form of slavery, but a voluntary slavery that only lasts a certain period of time was a huge step forward. 
uh, so it's important to understand when you see something about the Bible or read something in the Bible to understand what the whole Bible says about that subject and what the culture was going through at that time. Because, like I said, like if you go to uh, Babylon, a third of the people that lived in the city, maybe more, were slaves. So, like and had no choice, and their children would be slaves, and their grandchildren would be slaves, unless somehow they could buy their own freedom. Well, what the Bible says is, you could only be slave if you're a volunteer, volunteer yourself into there, and after a certain period of time, you're free, whether you have the money to free yourself or not. I hope I didn't confuse you or muddy the water. If you have any more questions, ask me. I'll try to clarify or answer your questions. Uh, thank you for joining me on the journey to use God's gifts to grow his kingdom and prepare for the future and live a better life.